uh, who is uh, on the line to share his thoughts with us on some of these critical issues. Hello and good morning, Doctor. Good morning and thank you for having me. Well, it's wonderful to always have you on the program. Uh, it's uh, good to have you here. Let's start off with the World Food Day. Uh, well, Nigeria has been faced with some strenuous food crisis in the last uh, couple of years and more amplified within 2023. Now, with the celebration of World Food Day, reports say that uh, many Nigerians have grown weary and have now resorted to begging and borrowing uh, to be able to survive. How would you react to uh, this commemoration of World Food Day and the reality that Nigerians are faced with? Right. Uh, the reality of uh, food, uh, it's quite glaring in Nigeria. It's just uh, not uh, news to anyone again. You agree with me that uh, food... Uh, as a, a commodity is now very scarce in Nigeria, perhaps it's very beyond the reach of many. Uh, as you know that we have suffered a lot of in terms of uh, purchasing power. We can also see even flood-related uh, uh, problem. We can also see insecurity-related uh, uh, problem. All these come together to give us uh, a very challenging uh, time in terms of food, uh, uh, food uh, consumption. So when we say food consumption in Nigeria, it's becoming something that we have never experienced before. So it's a challenging time for you. And I think this today, what for should be a rethinking day to determine way forward to actually move on uh, from where we are today. Because, you know, let's even look at nutritional uh, uh, food. You know, people are not looking at food that are nutritional now. People are not looking at, do you eat at all? Do you, are you able to consume at all? I can tell you, a lot of people are even doing it in the morning. There are no food in the afternoon. Then in the evening, you manage. That's what most families are doing. It's quite a challenging period for Nigeria. Well, it's it's indeed quite a challenging period for Nigeria. But uh, Dr. Aliu, don't you think that perhaps uh, in a situation like this and with such commemoration, perhaps uh, the federal government or the the uh, Ministry of Agriculture could have done something for vulnerable Nigerians? Now, yesterday was uh, the International Day for Rural Women. And, of course, uh, in commemoration with that as well, perhaps the federal government in line with the Minister of Agriculture could have done some sort of uh, palliative sharing uh, to people in rural communities to ensure that uh, uh, the, the rate of hunger is sort of suppressed in these uh, rural communities. Do you share the same thoughts? Right. I, I would edify a bit because, uh, you know, a uh, major, uh, majority of the land belongs to state government. So when you say federal government, the federal government can only bring uh, incentive, incentivize uh, farmers, find a way to encourage their state. But the major food producing zone is from state. So each state is expected to have a particular hectare of land that they will use to food. By the time that six states encourage farming and have their own even farm itself, it would have ameliorated the, the suffering. A good example is the Ninja state government who do not only make sure they provide tractor, is also using it in its own, in the state farm. So I think we need to go back and talk to this state because states come to the federal government and collect allocation every year. How many people can federal government feed? Perhaps maybe federal government only have right on FCT. So other state belongs to state government. So for them to process, you could recall that even when President uh, Bola Metinubu came on board, he said, he declares of emergency on food security. But one year down the line, we do not see any uh, meaningful outcome. That simply means there is no good relationship between the federal government and the state to encourage states to farm. Then you also we must also give credit to President Mohammed Buhari. Remember, he did anchor borrow. And you agree with me that the anchor borrow actually have a lot of uh, impact. In fact, as a, as a, at, at a particular point, we are self-sufficient when it comes to uh, food. I mean, rise in particular. So we want this government also to do something like that. So I think we should hold states responsible for food security in Nigeria. Well, well, doctor, uh, there is a very worrying um, statistics here, much like um, a, a report by the conservative estimate of the national average cost of a healthy diet in the country, which uh, is pegged at about 1,225 naira per meal. Now, as of August, this is as of August this year, a family of four typically would require 150,000 naira a month to have one meal per day. 
Now, not to talk of the standard three square meals per day. We are talking about four people in a family having one meal per day. Cost about 150,000 Naira. And our minimum wage as a country now stands at about 70,000 Naira, which most state governors even refusing to pay the 70,000 Naira. How do we balance this up to ensure that Nigerians don't begin to die of hunger? Because if people can afford one square meal per day, I, I, I doubt if there will be some sort of law and all that remaining in the country in the coming months. Right. Honestly, I must commend uh, we Nigerians. We are very, very enduring, as you see, because it's quite a tough time for our Nigerian our people. But uh, the fact is that it actually varies. It depends on where you are that you can buy a meal at 1,250 uh, naira. It depends on where you are. And what type of meal are we actually talking about? Is it meal that actually, you know, qualify uh, the standard of a better uh, living? Uh, perhaps, we also mentioned about, uh, you know, most of us consume from what is called autonomous consumption in economics, whereby you have to find other sources of surviving. You know, go to your neighbor, do this, do that. A lot of things. One fifty thousand naira uh, for a month for a family of five to consume. How much is the salary? Salary of seventy thousand. I can also tell you it has not commenced. The seventy thousand has not commenced. Most states are actually saying it, they have not started uh, paying the money. So it's a harrowing period for our uh, Nigerians to, to to survive. But I think uh, if there's anything Nigerians should be sufficient about, it should be food sufficient. Because we have arable lands that are uncultivated. We have water that we can use for irrigation. You know, the only problem is man-made problem. And what is man-made problem? Insecurity and uh, policy direction of the of the government. Because I, can, I will also go back to what is bringing about food. Uh, inflation. Because the major push, the major driver of Nigerian inflation is still food inflation. And it's a function of energy. So sometimes you go to some environment, they have food and the food is rotting. But they cannot have that finance to move the food from the farm to the where they can sell it or people can buy it from them. So these are the problems. So it's a myriad of issues. But the uh, low-hanging fruit we should solve is the problem of energy security to move the food. And the problem of uh, uh, farmers, elders, uh, clashes and uh, kidnapping. And also, you know, the inability of coordinated way of producing enough food for Nigeria. It's the problem. Well, inability of uh, producing coordinated food for Nigerians is part of the problem, but there is uh, also another problem uh, where it says about 50% of uh, the, the food produce that Nigerians access from their farms are lost during the process of harvest. This is a very worrying, worrying uh, statistics. Do you perhaps uh, sh could share what uh, might have been the reason for these uh, such big losses where fifty percent of farm produce are lost. Why well, would fifty percent of uh, farm uh, produce are, are lost? I think it's it has come with a lot of factors. One, you know, you know, people are not well trained in terms of farming. Most people are doing subsistence uh, farming, and when people are not exposed to processes of actually harvesting this farm produce, it becomes a problem. Number two, we have issue of storage. You know, ideally, there's some food that uh, and there's some produce that are, are perishable. But if you have the strategy to actually store it, it helps a lot. But even those that are not perishable, people don't really have the structure to actually produce it. And that's why we uh, to preserve it. And that's why we talk about state government. State government are to come into this. Because federal government cannot go to every local government to provide uh, such solution. And that is the major problem. So I think the major thing we should be looking at is how states can actually come on board to support farming farming and farmers to make sure that they have the uh, adequate uh, technology uh, the, the technology and knowledge to actually manage such. Now, uh, Dr. Aliu, in, in a very sharp contrast uh, between the reality on ground with the food crisis in the country and uh, the hunger and hardship that many Nigerians are faced with, uh, the CBN governor has uh, made some statements that many people might not really concur with he mentioned that uh, the economy is on a is an, an is in an upward tra trajectory however inflation rate has also gone up about 37 uh, 34.7 percent as of today 
How do we have these conflicting statements coming from the CBN governor, the reality of the inflation rate, as well as the reality of what Nigerians are facing, all contrasting? Right. You know, you know it's, it's economy. Then, uh, you know, most times people want to interpret the figures. But sometimes those figures does not translate <laughs> to the well-being of people. Perhaps it takes time. Now, if you look at the last uh, inflation, it was uh, reduced. But now it has increased within a month to about 32.7. Uh, what is the factor? The factor is just the major uh, problem of energy uh, security. So those indices they are looking at, they are just for the previous one. So we should continue to look at the current one because the, the hardship continue, you know, without, uh, you know, a recourse or coming down at all, at all. So I think those ones they are seeing are not true reflection of what is happening in the Nigeria economy. Well, thank you, Doctor, for sharing your thoughts with us on uh, World Food Day and uh, the reality of the food crisis faced uh, with that Nigerians are being faced with. Let's move away from that story a bit and uh, touch on the much controversial Libya-Nigeria situation where um, some people, some Nigerians are divided over uh, how the Libyans were received in Nigeria and what actually happened and how the super eagles of Nigeria were held hostage at a Libyan airport for more than 15 hours before they were you know, able to be airlifted back into the country. Now, the Senate has swung into action, you know, blowing hot and threatening uh, to take actions or some sort of sanctions against uh, uh, the Libyan government, asking them to apologize to Nigerians and the Super Eagles of Nigeria for the ill treatment that our players were met with in Libya. What are your thoughts on this? Right. I think two wrong does, does not make a right. I think that's the premise we should start from. So no matter what, I think uh, Nigerians actually, maybe because of logistics and what have you, actually did uh, what is not uh, ex uh, accepted because we must also have culture of welcoming people and managing visitors very well, which is uh, normal in our culture. We, we are very, very welcoming. So perhaps maybe there's a gap. So, But for Libya to now say, because there's one hour problem, now give us that now a problem. I think that's quite a, a very, very wrong. Perhaps, if you look at the risk itself, you diverted the plane that was supposed to land at uh, Benghazi to Al, uh, Al Barak uh, Airport on air. You know, that's one danger that we shouldn't even think about. And the second one is that you want to punish uh, us because if you, you think we have actually air on our own. I think that's what uh, CAF should make sure that they actually Policy. Because if you allow this, and I, and that's why I have supported them not to have uh, even played the match. Because if they can treat us in this manner, I, we don't know what will happen when our players even get on the pitch. So I think it's a good idea for the for Nigerians not to play the, the match. Then I, I I think it's the proper time to now see CAP and how active CAP is. Because if CAP does not do what we actually expect, we take it to FIFA. Because in, you know, it's it's quite surprising that you know you will now subject India to that level of pain. So not even two hours, three hours. You know, it's in fact they cannot, they don't have access to internet. The facility to take them to is not is not day to day facility. You know, it's quite uh, surprising. And this is where we also see our own NFF to do uh, something very meaningful because I, I think on a global stage we are not at the same level in terms of sport with, uh, with Libya. So for Libya to now say, yes, they want to punish Nigeria by themselves, why not to report to the appropriate quarters and let them do what they're supposed to do? So and, and, and I also saw the cancellation of the of the match. It's not mentioned, it's not on the dashboard. But I was thinking they should have awarded Nigeria at that point because you cannot say you have to, uh, you know, give uh, Nigeria punishment by yourself and you still uh, uh, skate through that. I think we need to look at that properly. Well, well, in looking at that properly, uh, Dr. Liu, what uh, measures do you think that perhaps CAF or, or the federal government could take in ensuring that the necessary um, action is taken for this not to happen again? Now, remember that the, the National Assembly said that they will summon the Libyan ambassador uh, to Nigeria for questioning, and they have also asked the Libyan government, a war-torn country at the moment, to apologize 
to Nigerians. But do you think there are better ways to address this or maybe more effective ways to ensure that uh, uh, this doesn't happen again? And of course, they understand that this was in all ramifications a very wrong move and holding Nigerians, Nigerian players hostage in their country is perhaps an act of uh, what many might describe as an act of terrorism. Right. Let's even look at this as a lacuna. Maybe there is no particular law that guided this uh, process. Maybe it's happening for the first time. So I think going forward, this will give the uh, car frames to actually uh, have a law guiding it. This also gives Nigeria opportunity to plan uh, in case of of uh, I know process like this again. Then on the part of NFF, I think they did uh, so well because you recall, beyond our players, there are other personalities that are there. Deputy Governor of Edo State was there. Other uh, Senate, I mean, House of Rep members were there. So it's not a small thing. And so it's not only player experience, they also have experience. So I think it's good that the executive are there, the legislature are there, the player managers are there. And so it, it, I think it's a good. So, but going forward, we must use this as a springboard to engender our, uh, our our level of development of sports globally for them to know that you can't do this to Nigeria and go scot free. I think in the federal government is doing the right thing, telling the Nigeria and uh, Libya government to actually apologize. I think that should come first. You know, looking at the diplomatic uh, agreement within us, that should have come first. And going forward, Nigeria will now have a law guiding such a, a break of process. Well, Doctor, we have just about uh, four minutes to wrap up this conversation. I'm afraid time will not permit us to uh, discuss in-depthly into some of these issues. But there's something else I want you to react to before you go. Uh, at the floor of the Senate uh, yesterday, a senator, Senator Kau, uh, you know, moved the motion, a push to test lawmakers or politicians in general for drug use, citing that even in the lawmakers' offices, there are people who peddle drugs within the National Assembly. Now, this was met by an uproar, of course, as expected. How would you react to such um, a very bold statement by Senator Kau and uh, the possibility of this happening in uh, the Nigerian political space? I think uh, it should be commended and commended very well for that bold stuff. You recall, maybe it's Kanu State also that has been checking uh, or checking the executive and the legis I mean the uh, legislature before they, be they came to office. It's not a bad idea at all, at all. You know, who come with, uh, if you want to lead, you must lead by example. I want to say example. You must subject yourself to such test. You know, look at that very, very, uh, 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 maybe how do I call it, a very uh, emphatic statement saying that some people even peddle drug in National Assembly. That's quite indicting. So I, and I think they should look into that. And I want to say that I trust the Buba Marwa led the NDLU. They can actually do that if President Bola Metunibu support them to actually carry out that test. So anybody who fell a victim of such, they sh it should be denied that position so that we we'll discourage level of drug uh, addiction or peddling of drugs or sales of drugs or use of drugs uh, among uh, our leaders. So it will now you know, trickle down to citizens of Nigeria. Well, well, in doing that, I believe uh, a lot of issues surrounding drug abuse will be curtailed. Now, another issue that was raised is uh, that of politicians giving out hard drugs to youngsters, especially during, poly uh, during elections. You know, not necessarily political talks, but just people who are... Uh, ardent supporters of these politicians. How do we curtail this? I know the uh, NDLA-led administration of uh, uh, General Buba Marwa is uh, quite on top of its game. But how do we ensure more stringent measures to curb this menace? It, it, it's going to be quite difficult because there is need for political will. It, it, it must come with political will. If there is no political will, I can tell you, it does not work. And the political will should come from the executive and the legislature for him to actually carry out those things. So I think we just want need to work our political will and also review our, I mean, maybe we give it more constitutional backing that every person who wants to actually lead us should embark on. And anybody who found one thing, especially giving uh, your followers a drug, such person they should, should face maximum uh, punishment. But the fact is that 
how is our process how is our judiciary will we be able to really sanction these people that is the question all right, Dr. Aliu Elias, I must thank you so much for always, always finding the time to come around on the program. It's always a pleasure to have uh, these discussions with you, with your vast wealth of knowledge and contributions to national issues. Thank you for having me. Thank you.